Yo, what's up? This your boy, Two Dollar Fabo. Ow! And I just jumped out the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Bitch! Why she looking at the bar, man? Like I'm playing in the bar, man. Baby girl, just clout chase me, man. That's what she want all fast. We got the legendary Fabo off the porch with us today, man. How you feeling, bro? Always good. Yeah, appreciate you being in here, man. Been working yeah. on this one for a minute. <laughs> yeah. And um, saw last night you had a show at, um, at the Miami Lounge. Yeah. How'd that go? Yeah, it was uh, a lot of young filmmakers out there showing their uh, films and stuff. And uh, I thought it went well. You know, yeah. we were filming for the DJs of Atlanta. Yeah. In the yeah. reality series with uh, me and Nick Ferry. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be a new reality show, right? Yeah. It's dope. Do you know what channel that's going to be on or uh, what network? You know, right now they're just working on it. You know okay. I mean? Just trying to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Um, how would you describe a Fable performance? Fable a lot of your shows are legendary. <laughs> I just be trying to do something different, you know, than what the next person doing, you know. Yeah. I'm always trying to make you remember it. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, I was just, I'm unbelievable. Yeah. Who did? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you seem like a natural performer, entertainer when you're up there. Do you, did you ever get nervous at all when you were first starting to perform anything? I don't know. I guess I get nervous before every performance. You yeah. Because you never know how the crowd's going to react. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, what can you tell us about this Tin Man dance you've been oh. doing? <laughs> nah, I mean, you know, Wizard of Oz, Tin Man. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about him being hit with the all and all that. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> and uh, you're working out the kinks. <laughs> That's how I feel like, you know, when uh, people see me nowadays or whatever, you know, I'm, they see me working out the kinks and they be taking pop shots and all of that. Like, you know, it ain't that bankhead for real. <laughs> yeah. Now, did you practice on that dance or was that just something that just, you know, yeah, just I'm came always, to you while you're on the stage? always practicing. I mean, you know, practice, they say practice make perfect or whatever, but I mean, you always want to be one step ahead. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I did this on, on top of mountains in Japan. I mean, literally, you know, <laughs> climb mountains in Japan and, uh, I get to the top and I sit right there and be, you feel what I'm saying, for a while and I get it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've toured in Japan twice now, right? Oh, my God, man. Nine, ten times. Nine, ten times. Wow. Yeah. Well, what's the atmosphere out there at these kind of shows when you're performing? I mean, you know, you get people who come from different villages and providences and stuff. And uh, you got some of these people, they, uh, you know, they take bicycles and go to train stations and, oh. you know, their journey be crazy. So... Yeah, you know, it's a it's an experience. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them are diehard fans too. You yeah. know, yeah. I would say. Yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, let me ask you: Have you managed to stay relevant for over fifteen years now in the the rap game? Being creative. Hmm. Yeah, just being creative, being myself, or whatever. And you know, some of the stuff that I already done. You know. Yeah. I like to say it was legendary. You know, people. You know, they like to look back at it and say, "Damn, I can relate." So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Did you think 15 years ago that you'd still be performing some of these songs and wow. still getting booked up across across the world? You know, I was just trying to get away from ketchup sandwiches. Hmm. <laughs> That's real right there. You know, you're getting that raw <laughs> shit. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? You know, I'm telling you about my experiences. So, yeah, you yeah. know, that's all I was thinking about. Yeah. You know, I, trying to eat. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> literally. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's take it back to the pool palace days. What can you tell us about the pool palace in Bankhead? Do the pool palace, B and B, Rocky Hill. Do that. He was yeah. making songs for the pool palace. Yeah. Welcome to the palace <laughs> where it goes down every weekend. Go on, do it for me. Yeah. I mean, you know, the palace was that spot. Like, you see these movies or whatever, like uh, Cadillac Rackers and all of these type of movies like that or whatever. You know, you think of the palace as, you know, like one of those hubs where everybody came to this club or whatever, yeah. and it was like. And it was brewing. You could just see it brewing. This dude was coming up with his. He was coming up with his. You had uh, Young Jeezy and them dominating the clubs or whatever. And hmm. Franchise jumped off. Yeah. And uh, once Franchise jumped off, it was like that was that. It hmm. gave us that momentum. And uh, you got K-Rab and all of them. And hmm. Lil John tried to get in on it. But, you know, <laughs> well. Yeah. You could say that Snap Music was birthed there at the Pool Palace, right? We never right? called it Snap Music. We don't no. know what that is in Atlanta. Hmm. What did you guys call we it? We call it geek music. Geek music. Okay. Okay. It's what and, it is. We yeah. ain't, it ain't what we, it's what it is, period. Yeah. Everybody at the pool probably was geeked up. Hmm. We ain't never heard snap a day in our life. We don't know what the hell y'all talking about. Hmm. You think they did that just because of the snaps and actual music, you know? We just didn't give a fuck. We yeah. kept doing it, you know? 
we ain't the one writing in the magazines and shit. So ain't nobody come talk to us about it or whatever. When we get to where we at, hmm. you know, we just try to be polite. Yeah, yeah. No, that's real. I got you. I got you. At that time, you had to be polite, but you know, yeah. times have changed now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got you. Um, and you got your start as a producer, right? Yeah. You were yeah. working with uh, OJ the Juice Man and yeah. Parlay, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, wh- what type of equipment or software were you using to make beats I mean, back then? MPC. 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 Yeah. MPC 2000. Uh, uh, Born Immaculate. You know, he was a producer at, uh, at D4L Records or whatever. Yeah. And I come in there, him and Mook B, they both had their MPCs or whatever, and they had oh. all their sounds in it or whatever. They didn't want nobody to touch them. And uh, when they went in the studio, you know, I, I learned how to work them. Hmm. And uh, I started making money off of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, I was dropping them tracks. I had, uh, I dropped a couple of tracks for Young Money, uh, which is the FMG right now from Bankhead. Oh, you okay. Know, and uh, they were some good tracks, too. And I got in there with K-Rab and, uh, you know, K-Rab was just, K-Rab just, he a genius. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? And uh, he had songs on everybody in the club except us. So, huh. and, you know, when we finally got together, it was dope. Yeah. Were you rapping at this point, too? Yeah. Yeah, my always I was singing. I'm never. Yeah, I'm never really rapping. Like if you listen to my songs, I'm singing. Like I'm not. Yeah. I'm not rapping. You feel what I'm saying? I'm. I'm a rock star. You feel? You know, I was. I felt like that at that time from watching people like Michael Jackson, Mick Jagger. I'm looking at these people. I want to be like that person. Hmm. You know, I, it's it's that I didn't want a ceiling. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? So still don't want a ceiling. I'm just. I'm in space. Yeah, and you look at the rap game now, and it's all rapping and singing. You know. You, you guys were really ahead of your time, you know? Yeah. I mean, we're still here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, I'm loving it. Yeah. Do you feel like you get the respect or credit um, for starting some of them trends? I really don't care. Don't care about it, huh? <laughs> just just then, keep you booked up, right? <laughs> I mean, as long as you keep looking, that's cool with me. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Um, you still making beats now, though? Yeah. yeah. Every day. Every day I get up, you know, drop a couple of tracks or whatever, huh. you know. Smoke a couple of blunts. That's where you smoke your blunts at. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Right in front of the equipment. You know, I'm always trying to come up with something new. Yeah. You still use an MPC or have you moved over to software? I got a little bit of everything. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I do a lot of stuff off of Pro Tools now, though. Just straight Pro Tools. Yeah. You know, through the loops and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Did that make it easier for you? I mean, uh, I like for it to be hard, so I'm always hmm. trying to challenge myself. Hmm. Hmm. I got yeah. you. I got you. Um, all right, uh, you were introduced to Shorty Lowe through his sister, right? Man, his sister went to this uh, program, and uh, they just, they was always beefing or whatever, <laughs> and uh, dudes fighting on the bus or whatever, and where we get dropped off at, and uh, you know, we were trying to keep the peace. And then, uh, yeah, when I came back to Born Home, maybe like six or seven years later, yeah. you know, I walked up in there and I was like, yo, you know, and know me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was, it was just about the work then, though. But yeah. you know, we we found a relationship. Hmm. Hmm. I got you. Uh, what was uh, Lowe's reputation in the streets at this time? <laughs> this shit, Lowe's the man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, when I was in the band, you know, Lowe was he, he was the man. Like it was just like he was that dude. He had this burnt orange Monte Carlo. He'll pull up, hmm. you know, and he'll jump out. You know, he went throwing the money out or none of that or whatever. It was just like what you need, you feel yeah. what I'm saying, and all of that or whatever. He, so he was always around, you know yeah. what I mean? And uh, I grew up watching him, so yeah. I knew who he was. Everybody knew who he was, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and D4, D4L already existed uh, before you joined, right? Yeah, D4L was the click. Yeah, and you there was know. a bunch of members, right? Yeah. It wasn't just the, uh, the four of you guys, of, right? I used to go in the pool palace some night or whatever, and, he got 14 people in the contest, and I'm like, man, all y'all together. Every time they get up and perform a song, they all together. And I'm like, why wow. I can't beat these dudes? And, uh, <laughs> you know, we had to make better songs, but uh, I pulled it together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and one of the first big songs you guys had was uh, Bitch Can't Do It Like Me. Yeah, but we had a song called Money okay. with, uh, with the Franchise Boys but when they jumped off or whatever. You know, we had that playing in the club, too. Okay, and okay. And so people around that knew us for that. Hmm. And uh, I had the Palace song or whatever, you know, that was playing at the Libra too, because I did a Libra version. Okay, uh, yeah. For uh, with OJ and, uh, you know, they was jumping off over there with Thuggio. Hmm. Thuggio, my dog, too. I don't know if y'all know about Thuggio. Yeah. But yeah, man, you know, it was dope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so talking about that song, I Bet You Can't Do It Like Me. Yeah, Bet um, You Can't Do It Like Me. That, that was the response to another rapper claiming that he had uh, started some dance moves or something? Or? Oh, no. Nah, it was a response to Franchise. 
Okay. You know, <laughs> you know, they was on TV, they was doing their thing or whatever, and uh, we partners now. But, uh, you know, it was just at that time or whatever, we was bitter. You feel mm. what I'm saying? But uh, we didn't understand the business. And, uh, you know, they was on the road or whatever, and, uh, you know, we felt like they should be tough. It's just like any other nigga who's standing beside you when you take off or whatever. Yeah. But now that we understand the business, we know when a nigga take off, he gone. Yeah. You know, nigga handling his business or whatever, you know, and when he can reach back in, he fuck with you, <laughs> and they did that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird that, you know, you guys were pretty cool. Yeah. You guys had songs before, yeah. then you started beefing, yeah. and now you guys are all cool again, yeah. too. We were never really beefing, but, you know, it was faction that 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 went a little bit too far, or whatever. But that was on them. Yeah. That ain't had nothing to do with everybody, you know. It was handled how it was handled, and you know that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. I remember a couple of diss songs. Did it go any further than that? Uh, I mean, hey, you know the streets talk. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Parlay mentioned uh, when I interviewed yeah. him that there was Parlay, a few club fights. We were just, man, Parlay was just together in Arizona, man. You know. Yeah, uh, they called me out to the spot where they was at or whatever and show. Stupid love. They're my hmm. dogs. I always have been. Parlay. You know, I call him something else or whatever, you know what I mean? Because I grew up with him, but yeah, yeah. We, that's my dog. Okay. Pimpin' too. Pimpin' was the first dude to do a beat on me, period. If it went for Pimpin', y'all wouldn't even know me. Hmm. Because hmm. we went to Allen Temple. Yola took me to Allen Temple hmm. and uh, went in the apartment. Pimpin' was in there with his equipment or whatever. He dropped the money truck or whatever. Uh -huh. and, and without the money truck, you wouldn't know. I mean, we probably would have still did something because we had ride roll and stuff like that or whatever. And we was already getting airplay. But, uh, you know, I think that was the moment that everything changed or whatever, because, yeah. you know, people in the club started to, you know, know who D4L really was because we was getting up there performing it. Yeah. 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 No, I got you. I got you. Um, did you guys ever have any uh, confrontations with the Yin Yang Twins or anything over the Whisper song? Nah, man. We just wanted to see why they was doing the dance or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when we met them, they turned out to be cool, too. Oh, okay. Okay. So that was it. Just yeah. Once you guys talked it face to face, yeah, that was yeah, it. Yeah. All right, I got you. Um, and while Bet You Can't Do It Like Me was blowing up, uh, you were in jail, right? Yeah. Um, what was that like? Did you know the song was blowing up while you were in there? or? No, nah, we had did this uh, Jonesboro South Day. And then we had this, uh, we had a stage set up outside in mm -hmm. the middle of the field or whatever that they had put up. And we had never performed together. And all of us was together just this one time. <laughs> And they had, we did this performance and that's, it, the access channel was jumping off and they start running it on a loop hmm. and I get locked up. And so, you know, I'm in jail or whatever and everybody's like, you know, I like that song y'all got or whatever. And I'm like, what song? You know, when you see that at, you know what I mean? And uh, they start letting us stay up late or whatever. And, you know, we called it a couple of times. So, oh, wow. Okay. Man, it was dope. It was like, there was a lot of people out there and it was, it was tight. So yeah. the song kind of started jumping off from that. Hmm. How big was the song when you got out of jail? <sighs> Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. When I walked in the club, I was like, wow. Huh. It was at the pool palace. I heard it too. That was dope. Yeah. Yeah. Did it surprise you how big the song grew while you was in jail? Uh, I mean, you know, when you're seeing it on the SS channel and the guards coming in, I already putting you on point. So, huh. you know, I knew it was getting big. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get my drink. Yeah. Um, and then you guys followed up with Laffy Taffy, hit number one on Billboard. Um, did yeah. that shock you? The Bet You Can't Do It Like Me was out for what? Let me get my drink. The uh, the bitch can't do it like me was out maybe a year mm -hmm. before all of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But a lot of people probably heard Laffy Taffy first. Yeah, but I mean, you know, hey, we was already who we were. Hmm. You know, we we hadn't signed a deal. If you came to Atlanta, you know, you knew who D4L was, like for the rest of the world or whatever. Yeah, I guess you could say that. But, you know, from going from neighborhood superstars to those dudes, we already felt like we was those dudes. Like, y'all just didn't know that. Yeah. And we was waiting on Low to get out of jail, huh. you know, so because we it was just like everybody was just in jail at certain times or <laughs> whatever. So, you know, we really felt like we was already who we were supposed to be because <laughs> you got dudes like Jesus came to us and they, they was doing the boom, boom, clap. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, if you really, that was the first place D4L was, you mm. know what I mean? If you really look in the video, we all in the front and we boom, huh. boom, clapping and everything. So, you know, that's, that's, that lets you know where, where we were. Mm. Cause Jeezy was like that dude at yeah. the time. He still is that dude to me, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I think that's 
we felt like we was already, so we kind of, when the Laffy Taffy jumped off for us, we was already riding that bitch, you can't do it like me fame. We just felt like that was part of the groove. Like, yeah. Yeah, we felt yeah. like that was part of the move. So, you know, we ain't see it like y'all seen it, I guess. Hmm. Uh, you know. Nah, I got you. I got you. And uh, that's on Laffy Taffy. Got a lot of hate, though, as well. Yeah, I mean, you're going to get hate with everything. Yeah, you figure any song that goes number one, people are either going to love it or they're going to hate it because they hear it so much, you know? <laughs> Man, I think people are entitled to their own opinion. Yeah. You feel me? And uh, you have to respect that opinion because, you know, that's why they sell different vacuum cleaners in the store. You know, mm. it may be one that you like that that person, this person may be shorter, taller. I don't know. Yeah. You know, everybody got their preference. So, yeah. you know, if you don't like me, I, I can't say yes to you all the time or whatever. <laughs> you know, I really would want some understanding just like everybody else, but you can't talk to everybody. All right. Um, I'm starting to see spaceships on oh, Bad Kid. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the most infamous uh, rap lines in Atlanta history. Yeah. Um, <laughs> were you geeked up? Are you recording this? I mean, I was just giving you one of my experiences. Yeah. I mean, basically, that's how I looked at it at the time. Yeah. My dude had died, uh, you know, the night before or whatever, and everybody was still going up, going on about that or whatever. And mm. uh, I guess I was just feeling it when I walked in the studio that morning. Yeah. So it wasn't about being geeked up and then I, you know, I was just giving you, you know, my, one of my experiences at that time. Yeah, yeah. What's it like when you uh, perform that song? Uh... Should it be lit? <laughs> <laughs> Probably don't even have to say that line. They sing it for oh, you, I mean, right? You know, shit. Yeah, it's one of them songs. Yeah. When you come in the club or whatever, you know, at a certain time of night or whatever, you got to play it no matter oh, where yeah. you at. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it still gets the same reaction it yeah. did, you know, 14, 15 years ago. I guess some people felt the same way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, D4L ended up breaking up after releasing that um, one album, right? We didn't really break up or whatever, you know. We just street dudes. You know okay. what I mean? Everybody just got caught up in the streets. We weren't doing music mm -hmm. or whatever. And after a while, time passed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of just everyone did their yeah. own thing, went their separate way, yeah. kind of, right? Um, and Shawnee Lowe went on to have a great solo career. Shawnee Lowe went on way down there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know, Shawnee Lowe got them, you know, he had a plan from the beginning. So you yeah. know, he ain't got time to wait around on us or whatever. It was always about the money. Yeah. Uh, did you keep a good relationship with him after uh, yeah, you know, after the group and everything? Shit, if it went for low, I wouldn't be sitting right here right uh, now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, I was going through a thing or whatever a couple of times, you know, I had to lean on Lowe to pull out of it. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, that's real. Um, what is Lowe's legacy here in Atlanta? Man, Godfather, King, shit, he a God to me, hmm. you know. And, I mean, I came out of the spot or whatever. He let me stay in the trap, everything or whatever. I'm like, man, there's a lot of stuff going on around here. He was like, you can move up in the studio if you want. I'm like, you got a studio? Like, yeah. <laughs> Took me up there to move B. And uh, he moved B, he had the car wash or whatever. He had the studio inside the car wash. I was like, shit, oh, I stay right here. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, we were back and forth. And, uh, you know, I was always with him, riding in the car with him. And that's how Bitch Can't Do It Like Me came about hmm. or whatever. So he was always involved. So. I mean, with everything that he had something to do with it, whether it was his charities or his football games, or, you know, it just goes on and on. The list just goes on and on on what he would do. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, to me, he God like it. I mean, to other people, I think it's the same way. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We just look at him like he belonged on a billboard on the side of a wall or something for everybody to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, long live low, man. Yeah, long live, shout out low, RIP low, man. Yeah. And, low. Hello. Yeah, you and some of the uh, D4L members uh, reunited at Freaknik. Yeah, a couple um, of times or whatever, man. You know, uh, we thought we was gonna pull it together, but you know, this time it, it, it's been for real. Everybody been on the same page. Hmm. You know, we sending each other beats and stuff or whatever, trying to get it done. So you know, we really, it, I think it's gonna happen like it's supposed to this time because everybody excited. Yeah. Hmm. Like an actual album. Yeah, yeah. We we were hmm. on stage at Freaknik, man. It was like it was natural. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Natural. Have you guys talked about doing like a reunion tour or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're working on that right now. So, okay. you know, you want to book D4L, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hit a nigga up. Yeah, I know the fans would love to see yeah, that. Yeah, man, you know, we're going to give it to them. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, let's talk about the final 30 seconds to uh, the song Tattoo. Oh. It's so legendary. Where my fucking Grammy at? How did you come <laughs> up with that outro? <laughs> oh, man, I, believe it or not, man, we was, uh, I was out with one of my dudes. He cool as shit. You know what I mean? You know, and uh, he he hit me up or whatever, like, yo, 
they down at the studio recording a song with this group or whatever, you know, they want you to fall through. I came through or whatever, you know, I seen a couple of more dudes I know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it just turned into a vibe. <laughs> I walked up in that bitch and I think it was like two takes, that whole shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I did that, uh, that end part in the beginning. That I, I literally did that when I walked right in the door. So that was the first part you did. <laughs> I was already, Barbara! I was already gone. Like, and uh, that's how hyped up I was, you know. Huh. And uh, yeah, man, and, you know, it, it just, it took off from there. Yeah. What was people's reaction in the studio when you laid that down? Oh man, we was lit. <laughs> we was lit. Trust me, we played it a lot, you know. But like I said, it was in the beginning. Yeah. So when I heard it at the end or whatever, I was like, wow, that's dope. You know what I huh. mean? Huh. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that, that's a classic right there. Yeah, I like um, that title. Give me my fucking Grammy. <laughs> and Little Duval was in that music video, yeah, man, too. Yeah, man, Little Duval, man. Little Duval, hey, that's my dog, man. He good people, you know, but he still need to let me get him that tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to hook him up. I'm going to do it the Hawaiian style. You know where they take the little needle and... Yeah, just chisel it into him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um... Uh, all right, you're the first rapper I recall wearing the white shades too. Yeah. What was your uh, reaction when you saw you know other rappers and you know a lot of fans start wearing them too? I mean, you know, my brother got life, and uh, he used to wear the white shades. Yeah. And uh, when I got out of prison or whatever, it, they came right and got them, you know, at the at the same time. So it was like mm -hmm. you know they bust down the door and all that shit or whatever. And uh, he used to have the shades up on the TV or whatever, and I just remember getting up looking at them. Hmm. And uh, I just thought about it. So when I got on, they had uh, they did a photo shoot or something like that, and I had the white shades on, and they painted the shades black, huh. you know, or whatever. And uh, I was pissed off about that <laughs> shit. So if you look at one of those D4L covers or something like that, they painted my shades back black or something. So I made sure I wore them white everywhere else. You yeah. know what I mean? And uh, you know, it's just a symbol for me. It don't mean shit to nobody else. But yeah. You know, still got a pair. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> there we are. Versace, 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 Versace. <laughs> so it kind of stepped up the brand a little bit over the yeah, years. Yeah, huh? yeah. All right. You mentioned um, working on a new D4L album, and you mentioned uh, you you know you wake up every morning and start producing. Yeah. Are I you mean, working on a solo album or I mean, project you know, right now? Um, you always you always trying to CBD CBD. <laughs> <laughs> you always trying to. Uh, you know, well, I'm always not trying. I'm always doing something different. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? I'm always working on something different. You're always trying to create something different, you know? So, yeah, I, I got a lot of songs. I got a lot of albums or whatever. I could put one out at any given time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just about what you want to hear, you know, what you what you feeling right now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you, if you would have been already on me, if you would have... I already been paying attention to me. You would have known that I always put music out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm always putting music out. Sometimes it just be out there. Yeah, sometimes it goes under the radar. You know, you yeah, just throw it out yeah, there. Yeah, sometimes it be out there. But yeah, man, I'm always doing music. I got a project I'm working on right now. I'm working with DJ Speedy, hmm. uh, the one that uh, did a lot of Jeezy stuff in the beginning, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I work with Shada Red or whatever. Hmm. You know, I'm working with uh, Nick Fury right now with the television show that I'm doing, the reality okay. show, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm working on a lot of different projects. I'm I'm actually on the Kings of Crunk tour right now too. Oh okay. You know, it's, how's it's, that going? It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. You know, coming to a city near you. Who else is on that tour with hey, you? Uh, right now, man. You know, go look at my page. Yeah, <laughs> go look at my page. I am Fabo on uh, Instagram and all that. Give you something to do. Yeah. There you go. We'll have the link in the description for them. All right, um, and you and Corleone, uh, King of Jackson, been working on KOJ. Up. That's my that's my ace cone boom. We got the Smith and Wesson right now. Yeah, that's jumping off. You know, uh, I seen y'all interview Corleone or whatever, yeah. man. He a little bit more raw than that too, man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, he had I don't, I don't know who talked to him before he did that interview, but <laughs> he was low key than I ever seen him. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And then be on turn. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Carleon is my dude, man. You got them, uh, you know, Carleon got the studio in Atlanta where everybody yeah. be at. And uh, it's the spot. Yeah. Hey, you mentioned you guys have enough music to drop a project I together. I told you, man. We got, we, got a, we got a lot of music or whatever. We got a lot of music out there. Bitch won't leave me alone. <laughs> Bitch won't leave me alone. Shout it. We got, a, we got a lot of music out there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what's your thoughts on the current music scene here in Atlanta right now? The current music scene right here in Atlanta, 
the same as it always been. <laughs> Since we came in the game, we've been fucking dominating. Yeah, just on top. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've been dominating. You know uh, what I mean? It's gonna always be like that, as long as we're in the game yeah. or whatever. Atlanta, the music capital. Yeah, we keep it. You know, it's always some young new talent coming out of one hour hood. Yeah, one hour spots. You know, it's just it's a we got a lot of pain. You know, we got a lot of joy. We just want to share it with the world. And it seems yeah. like every time somebody got them giving you one of these Atlanta stories, you're paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I watched one of your recent interviews where you mentioned that you're a fan of a lot of the, the newer artists here, too. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know, I like Key. Yeah. You know, I like Lil Donald. Man, I like a lot of these dudes, man, that's just jumping off. You feel what I'm saying? They got they got that they got that little baby, man. You know, he, he really doing his thing or whatever, you know. Shout out to Future, too, for giving me that. That shout out, that was dope, yeah. you know, and pulling me in, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good look. All right. Um, what do you want your legacy to be when you're done with rap? Oh, I don't think, I don't think it's up to me to dictate my legacy. <laughs> you know, I'm, uh, I'm into so many different things or whatever. I, I don't think rap is going to define me. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So I don't let rap define what I'm doing, you know. Yeah. All right, what else you working on right now? You got the reality show. Uh, right now, you know, you can go download that new Star Wars, you know, that I got on that, uh, The Jedi Returns. Hmm. You know, that's I just put that up on all platforms or whatever oh, okay. for you to check out. And for my geek kids, I got a song called AOTD. Hmm. You know, you can go check out right now on every for every platform. So, you know, you can get some good Fable music if you want it right now. Yeah. You know, so I'm working right now trying to get you that EP. Yeah. Uh, Real soon, probably right here at the end of September, uh, the beginning of October. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Who are some producers you've been working with on that? Uh, like I said, you know, I'm working with Nick Fury right now. Yeah. And uh, DJ Speedy. I got a lot of producers, uh, Krispy Kreme. You know, if I miss you in this, you know, I'm not mad. You don't be mad at me. <laughs> uh, a lot of different producers. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to add? Nah, man. You know, I'm basically an open book. You know, you go to geekcity.com, G I K. And uh, you can go to uh, Instagram, I am Fabo. You can find me, man, you know. I'm out there. Hey, man, she ain't gonna fuck no nigga if a nigga ain't hear no shit. I'm trying to get under one, she gon' call, man. When she bust her ride, man.